In this video, we're going to look at the types of forces and turning moments that are exerted on a retaining wall when it's used to hold back a body of fluid. Now, if we refer to our diagram, what we see there is we see a retaining wall and it's holding back a body of fluid on the left-hand side. We would typically see this type of arrangement for dams and even flood protection mechanisms. But basically, what's going to happen due to the pressure of that water is the wall is going to experience a thrust force. And we'll call that thrust force F subscript t. So I've given you some equations under the diagram and you may well have seen some of these before. The first one refers to something called hydrostatic pressure. P equals rho gh. Now some of those variables there we would have seen before. We've got rho which is density. We've got g which is gravity and we've got h which is a height. Now in this instance the height that we're referring to is the height of what we call the head of liquid. So here we have a height h or a head of liquid. Now what this hydrostatic pressure equation is telling us is that the only variable other than the density of the fluid that affects the amount of pressure we experience is the distance below the surface. So if we imagine ourselves at the top of the liquid, there's no liquid above us, there's no pressure head. Therefore, the pressure would be zero because the distance h from the free surface is zero. If we go a bit further down the liquid, then when we get to here, we're going to experience pressure as a result of this head of liquid here. And so I'm sure you can imagine the deeper we go, the more pressure we're going to experience. Now, because of this, we get an uneven pressure profile. And I'm just going to sketch roughly what it looks like. We'll have a pressure profile that increases the further we go down. So this here represents the pressure profile. The pressure is zero at the top and it's maximum at the bottom. The next equation that we have there is force equals pressure times area. And again, this is a standard equation that doesn't only relate to hydrostatic pressure. But if we move to the third equation, this is more specific to this problem. It says the thrust force equals rho g h over two times a. Now where this equation comes from is because if we want to work out our thrust force, indicated on the diagram as F subscript T, we need to find the average pressure. Now we've already said that the pressure at the top of the fluid is zero and the pressure at the bottom is maximum. Therefore, the average pressure will be at a distance H over two or in the middle here. So at a distance of H over two, we'll have our average pressure. So the two formulas there, rho g h and pressure times area, give us the equation for thrust force because the average pressure is rho g h over two times the area in contact with the fluid will give us our thrust force. Now we have one more equation there, overturning moment, and the equation for that is F t, the thrust force, times h over three. Now that overturning moment will be the turning moment about the bottom of the retaining wall. Because if we look at what's happening, that force Ft is going to try to topple the retaining wall. We need to ensure that we've got sufficient foundations on that retaining wall to prevent that from happening. So we've got the thrust force times a distance. Well, the distance that we need to multiply the thrust force by is actually h over three. And that's because the center of pressure for that thrust force is two thirds of the way from the top of the free surface. Now you don't need to concern yourself too much with this at the moment. You'll look at this in more detail if you study at level four and above. But for the time being, the important thing is, is that the equation for the overturning moment is the thrust force times h over three. And that's because our center of pressure for that thrust force is at two thirds of the overall depth of the fluid. And we can mark that on our end view that would be our center of pressure, PP. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do some quick calculations to demonstrate how we would use these formulas, and then you can try applying some of these for yourselves. Okay, so I've given some values now. We've got a density of 1,010 kilograms per meter cubed. That would represent salt water. Fresh water has a density of 1,000. Salt water has a density above 1,000, and that density will depend on the concentration of salt. I've specified that the width of our wall is six meters, 
and the height of the fluid is 18.5 meters. Now for these formulas to be true, it doesn't matter how much of the retaining wall extends above the level of the fluid, providing it's at least at the level of the free surface of the fluid. So first of all, we're going to calculate our thrust force, and our thrust force is rho g h over 2 times a. So we can start inputting some values. Our thrust force is 1010 times gravity of 9.81 times our height over 2. Well, our height is 18.5 metres. So h over 2 is going to be 9.25 metres times our area. Well, the area that we need to use is the area that's in contact with the fluid. So this area here which hopefully you can see is the height of fluid times the width. So we have 18.5 times 6. Now if we run that all through the calculators, we get a thrust force, and that's represented by F subscript T. I'll add it on the two lines above as well. The thrust force equals 10,173,000. Now just for simplicity, I'm going to write that in meganewtons. So we've got 10 million, 173,000 or 10.173 mega newtons. Next we can calculate our overturning moment, which we know is the thrust force times a third of the height of the fluid. Now, although we've just said that our thrust force is 10.173 million, and I'm going to write it as 10.173 times 10 to the 6, I'm actually going to use my full calculator answer because I don't want to incur any rounding errors here. So in my calculator it says 10,173,142. So I'm going to use the answer function and multiply that by 18.5 over 3. And that will give me my overturning moment of... 62,734,000. Now once again I'm going to use our metric prefixes, so we'll get 62.734 mega newton meters. It's mega newton meters this time because it's an overturning moment which are measured in newton meters. So we've calculated everything for this question. Now if we were to add a second body of fluid to the right hand side of our retaining wall, we'll just add this to our diagram, then that body of fluid is also going to cause a thrust force and an overturning moment, except it's going to exert a thrust force in the opposite direction, and it's going to exert an overturning moment in the opposite direction as well. So if a question asked us to calculate the resultant turning moment, then we could calculate the thrust force and the overturning moment for the first body of fluid. And then we could calculate the thrust force and the overturning moment for the second body of fluid. And the net result would be the overturning moment caused by the first fluid minus the overturning moment caused by the second fluid. We can see here that each of those forces is trying to topple the retaining wall in a different direction. So the two key formulas to take away from this video are the thrust force equals rho g h over 2 times a, and the overturning moment is the thrust force times h over 3.